Hi guys and welcome back once again in this uh, airflow series. Uh, in the last video we explored a little bit how sensor worked. Now we want to kind of use hooks to retrieve the files that the sensor sensed and do something with these files. Uh, how do we do that? So uh, if you recall from the last video, what we had was this two tasks. The first one was a file sensor that was sensing for this test.txt file. And the second one was just a Python operator. So now what we want to do is maybe instead of just saying hi here, we want to kind of use a hook to do something with this file and maybe print its contents or something and then delete it and then we can reschedule the DAG and this will kind of happen all over again. So let's see how we can do that. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is basically say uh, run this task, I'm going to rename this to read file content task so in a way it's a little bit more uh, clear and I'm going to call this uh, task ID and here I'm going to say uh, print file content oops sorry rename print file content I'm going to refactor this and this one what we will do is kind of use uh, a hook uh, the really interesting thing here is that basically if you look into the file sensor code and I will uh, switch real quick to the presentation mode. If you look into the file sensor hook code, you will see really clearly that this one is already using its own hook. So in a way we can kind of reuse this as well. So we're going to copy this. And we're going to go back and I'm going to kind of paste this code. Oops, I did that. Sorry, just one second. Okay. I went into built-ins somehow. Uh, so I will paste this code. So I'm going to instantiate a hook. It, uh, it's going to be of a file system hook. I'm going to import this real quick. And basically, we are assigning self.fs connection ID here. Uh, I'm going to just copy paste uh, my fill system tool real quick here. So this is going to be the kind of uh, connection ID. It's, of course, the same one of the file sensor. And now we can call some uh, methods on this file system hook, uh, as you can see. Let's see the uh, file sensor, how it's kind of using these files. Uh, as you can see, it's retrieving kind of the file path that we are passing. And after that, it's kind of trying to understand if it's a directory or not. Uh, what we are going to do is something quite similar. We uh, have this file system connection ID, of course, and Basically, we are going to get the path exactly how this one is doing. So we're going to say hook.getPath. This is going to be our path, actually base path. And then we are going to read the file content. So we're going to say with open uh, os.path.join maybe import this name real quick base path and test.txt with a mode of r as fb and we're going to say print fp.read That's uh, pretty much it. We're going to save it. And then uh, we're going to create a new kind of operator, which is going to delete this file. Uh, or actually, we can even do it uh, here just to be uh, even uh, quicker. So let me recall which one is the 
we have the rm there uh, to remove, but this one is better, remove file. So remove deletes the file path. If path is a directory, uh, okay, this function can support paths, okay, perfect. So we're going to use this one, so we're going to say remove, and it's going to, maybe we are going to extract this little variable here. So I'm going to say introduce variable and we're going to say path. No need to actually instantiate this one twice. So let's clean this a little bit and we're going to remove path. Okay, we are basically good to go and we can try this out right now. Let's see what, what happens if we try it. So in here, if I do an ls, I still have my test.txt. Uh, I'm gonna echo hello inside test.txt and I'm gonna do a, this one, a cat of test.txt. As you can see, the content is hello. Um, and if I go back to the airflow, oops, I will be able to show you what happens. Let's go back to Airflow. Let's trigger the tag. And as you can see, this one has already succeeded. So it worked. The next one also did something. And as you can see, it printed hello. And now if I go back here and I do an LS, the file is not there anymore. So if I go back here, what happens is that this one is done. If I re-trigger it, it will kind of go back into this sensing state. And it will just stay there. Now I'm going to do the same again, but this time maybe I'm going to echo something completely different. Like my name is Rocketman. Uh, and I'm still going to dump it into the same file. If I go back and refresh, this one succeeded, as you can see, because basically it found the file as soon as I created it. It was about to poke again. And if I go back to the graph view and view the log, as you can see, you can read my name is a rocket man. So what is the kind of pattern that I wanted to show you here is this one. So you have a sensing task and then you have, uh, let's say, some tasks that will kind of do something with the censored files. And to do that something, they will use a hook that will be of the same type of the sensor. So you have, in this case, a file sensor here and the file system hook. And under the hood of the file sensor, you are still using this file system hook. Uh, and here you are using the same. So sense the file, do something with the file, and then even remove it or, uh, uh, you know, what, whatever you have to do. But this is the basic idea. So, for example, if you have to move large quantities of files from, let's say, an S3 bucket to, uh, to something else, maybe a local file system or something, what you're going to do is exactly that. You're going to kind of sense this S3 bucket. You're going to then dump all the data, download the data, maybe analyze the data or something. And then when you're done, you're going to kind of delete it from the S3 bucket. And in that way, you will kind of reschedule the DAG. Of course, you can schedule it as we have seen in the previous videos. And you will be kind of done with it. It will uh, keep going and you will be able to schedule these sensing and executing tasks. So once again, thanks for watching and uh, have a very nice day.